Photoshop gives you the ability to color frequently used menu items. If you choose Edit Menus, in Menus there are Photoshop defaults, but I could turn on What's New and see new items added in Photoshop CC Creative Cloud. So if I select What's New and click OK, as I click Menu Items, you'll see the new Share on Behance, or Behance, depending on where you were born. I can surf through and see that Crop has changed under the Image menu. Copy CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets, was actually added in Photoshop CS6, but only for Creative Cloud subscribers. So if you bought Photoshop as a box product, you didn't see this until now, until Photoshop Creative Cloud. There's added features for a lot of items. But let's take a look at customizing the menus just for you. To quote my mother, on some days I can't seem to find the exact thing I'm looking for, and if it was right in front of me, she'd say, if it were a snake, it would have bit you. <laughs> so we're going to choose Edit, Menus, and I'll go back to the Photoshop defaults, and I'll make a new set based on the Photoshop defaults. So I will call this Kelly, and don't change the folder where it's saving. It's a .menu or menu item that is in the proper place on your computer to be available all the time. So after I quit Photoshop today, my menu customization will stay. A few of the menu items that I use all the time that seem to hide from me when I'm looking for them. Under File, the first one is Save for Web. So if I choose Save for Web, I can select my own menu color. And let's make that red so it just jumps out at me. Another one under File that I like a lot is File, Automate and crop and straighten photos. I'll make that green and just choose colors that suit your mood or how you might be looking for them. In fact, I can choose automate and make that red. And I'll do one more. I'll scroll up and collapse file and under the image menu I quite often use adjustments. So we have mode and then all the Submenus for mode, adjustments, and hue and saturation. So I'll select that and make it red. And when I click OK, under File, there's my Save for Web, there's my Automate that is green, and if I look at Image, Adjustments, I could highlight just Adjustments, but I use it so frequently that menu item doesn't seem to ever escape me or escape my attention, but hue and saturation often does. So if you find yourself hunting for items that you've used a lot, but you're having one of those days, <laughs> feel free to add your own menu color. Now in some environments, under Edit, Menus, the IT department may want to lock down settings that users shouldn't be touching. For example, if I take a look at Filter, and I go down to Sharpen, and they're in the order that they occur in the menu. So I need to get all the way down to Sharpen. I do not like the Sharpen, Sharpen Edges, and Sharpen More. Smart Sharpen is a newer and far better way to get detail out of images, and my most comfortable way is Unsharp Mask. I always say, it's unsharp, let's mask it. But I've done some training at large magazines where the operators weren't given a tour of Smart Sharpen, or in the days before Smart Sharpen, weren't told how Unsharp Mask works. So they were getting scans of these headshots, beauty headshots, that already were a little bit noisy from the scanning process or had lint or dust on them, and they were using Sharpen, Sharpen Edges, and Sharpen More, which would make the noise worse. Unsharp Mask and Smart Sharpen have ways to sharpen where it needs it, but ideally we should be cleaning out the noise before we sharpen. 
So if I'm the IT department and find a user keeps defaulting to these three items because they sound good at first glance, but they might be doing more harm than good if they're in an untrained person's hand, I can hide them and possibly lock down your preferences. Now on your own machine, that's not likely to happen, but in large corporations, there are certain settings that end users may not be allowed to change because the corporation has decided, we use this workflow, we use these tools, and we're gonna to disable tools you shouldn't be using or we don't want you using. So if I look and I hit OK, under Filter, Sharpen, I see a much more concise menu and actually something very cool and new called Shake Reduction. But these are the two ways I prefer to add detail back to images. So I have covered adding colors to menu items that you use a lot but sometimes hunt for, how to hide menu items, and basically give Photoshop a look and feel that makes the features and menus you use most, most obvious to you, and disables menus that you don't want to be tempted to use or that your supervisor or your company has decided they don't want you to use. Now that's up to the company you work for, so hopefully you get control over all of your own preferences, and hopefully based on my tips, you can make Photoshop look and feel the way you'd like it to, through Edit Menus.